So it has been a minute since I put out a YouTube video. <laughs> I'm really sorry y'all, but I neglect YouTube like, like horrible. I was gonna make a joke, but then I thought it wasn't politically correct, so I wouldn't. So it's a few days after the HOA conference and I'm walking down here to check on some of the chicks that we brought home. Uh, it looks like everybody's going up for the night. It's starting to get darker sooner, so let's see. What's going on in there? Huh? Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? It for real stinks up in here. Like, I'm not even gonna lie. It smells like something died. While I was gone, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> Looks like something died too, but I know it didn't. The molt is real, y'all. Look at all the molting feathers. And the duck egg. So you can't really tell, but here's some chicky babies. From the red heat lamp, it's hard to see. <laughs> They're in there, and they're doing good. What do you think about all this craziness, huh? huh? What do you think about all the crazy? Are you happy to be back home? Yeah, you are. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you and eat you up. I'm gonna get you and eat you up, yes. So the HOA conference was awesome. It was so super cool to see a lot of you guys again this year. Some of you for the first time. I think some of you for the, for the third time. And it was such a great experience this year. Um, I was not around as much as I really wanted to be, but because I had this guy to take care of. And so I really felt like maybe I would feel left out this year. <laughs> like, is everybody going to forget me? Is everybody going to be like, who's that crazy girl that, you know, is talking about home sitting and stuff? But you didn't, y'all. You didn't. Every time I turned around, every time I went out to, you know, mingle with people somebody came up to me and they were like hey how are you how's the baby and a lot of you i didn't realize followed our pregnancy journey uh, online and that was a pretty inspiring um pretty inspiring thing because my child and his friend okay now that i got that over with um Anyhow, I don't even remember what I was saying, except it was such a great time. Really enjoyed it. You guys were really great to meet a lot of you for the first time, some of you over again. And you just made me feel extra special because uh, I didn't know how this year would go with me um, having Everett. And so it was just really fun. And he loved meeting everybody, but he was touched out by the end of the day. And uh, he was tired and we were all tired. <laughs> But it was, it was a great year. We had a lot of people come. We had almost 3,000 people. And um, our biggest year yet with, with people and vendors and uh, attendees. It was just great. So I say all of that to say we are already booking for 2020. And it's going to be fun. I'm going to have to go somewhere else to make this video. So we have some for the homestead coming up in 2020. We've kind of gone through a lot of different scenarios and had different things and um, compromised on what we're going to do. And what? Okay. And um, so our first plan of action is to kind of get our coop and run it in place so that we can, we have these you know, egg layers that are in the brooder. And those are from Murray McMurray Hatchery. They were so nice to donate them this year. We are not keeping all of them. We are only keeping some of them because we don't have room for, you know, 20 chicks in the yard. But we are gonna keep several of them. And those will be our spring egg layers, which we are super excited about. The next course of action is meat birds and 
Meat birds are something we haven't done here. We've, we've butchered some regular um, heritage birds, but we've never actually raised meat birds. And so that is our plan in the spring. I think we've decided on getting red rangers. Um, we've done a lot of comparison and kind of what's best and what's not good. And I think we've decided on the red rangers. If you go, I will try to link below a so the land video. If I don't keep walking, the baby, he's gonna cry. Uh, so the land actually did a video comparing the two, the Red Rangers and the Cornish Cross, and that kind of solidified my thought process on doing the Red Rangers. We had some of the Cornish from um, this fall, and they were just really dumb. Like, <laughs> no, no offense to anybody. I'm sorry if that makes anyone upset, but they were just really stupid. And so I want a bird. There's the backyard. That's just smarter than they are. And so we're gonna try the Red Rangers this spring um, because we're not hunting this year. And let me tell you why. We have done for the last few years that a lot of crops in Virginia are GMO crops. And increasingly, if the deer are eating in the woods and they're also eating in the fields, and Virginia is a huge farm state, and so most of the crops here are GMO crops. And so, the question is, are we really getting a wild crafted meat? Because they're eating GMO crops and probably not any different than what we're buying from the grocery store. So why are we gonna put all of this time into getting a deer every season or a few deer every season and eating it when we can get GMO filled meat at the grocery store. And so since our goal is to eat organically as possible, or at least as non-GMO as possible, I don't think we're gonna bag any deer this year. Um, besides that point, the chronic wasting disease is crazy right now in Virginia. And the sad thing is you're not really sure if, um, if the deer has it or not. You can get a perfectly healthy deer that can have chronic wasting disease. And Chronic wasting disease is basically parasitic and we already have to deal with enough parasites over here um, with Lyme's disease and so it's not really trying to add more parasites to our bodies if you get what I mean. And so I think we're just going to sit this one out and it might be the next few years. I'm not sure. but So that's why we're kind of trying to focus on meat, a meat source, a better meat source for our homestead this year and in the coming year. And meat chickens seem to be the best thing on a half acre. We have done meat rabbits in the past, but we couldn't really source a good source of hay for them. Um, though it might be something I try to get into again in the spring. I really want to get through this winter um, without any rabbits or other animals like that need more attention than chickens and ducks do. Um, you know, rabbits you gotta unfreeze waterers multiple times a day in the winter, and with a you know a six, seven, eight month old, it's it's not fun. You know, it's not fun. Um, so we might consider raising Rex rabbits again in the spring because we could make money off of those and we could butcher uh, what was left so that we could have some meat. But I think we're gonna kind of try to dive head first into the chicken butchering first since we haven't really done that yet um, other than just the random you know, stock bird, old hen that we wanted to do or had, you know, to call. It's unfortunate that we're not gonna be as in depth with deer this year, but I think we'll survive. We actually still have some venison left over from last year that we can kind of ration out, but it's not to say we won't ever do it. I mean, you know, Mark might get the itch and decide to go hunting and bag a deer, but um, we're gonna, I think we're gonna try to stay with it as much as possible, at least for the short term foreseeable future. <laughs> One of the most inspiring things that I took away from this year's HOA conference was something that Beth Doherty said. Um, it is the one thing that I really got to hear her, anybody say at HOA because I was constantly nursing Everett or trying to get him to, to want, you know, to be happy. Um, and it was during the Q&A, somebody asked, how do you find cheap land to homestead on? How do you find cheap land to you know, we're all on a budget. Not all of us can afford this. And she said something that really resonated with me that I really never thought of before. You know, so many of us are trying to find the perfect land, right? We're trying to find partially wooded, partially pasture, or all pasture, or all wood, or whatever. Whatever it is our needs are. 
But half the time it's not in our budget, especially if you're in Virginia and uh, Northern Virginia is, um, you know, the cost of living is higher and so land is higher and, and everything's just more expensive. But, but when she was asked the question during the Q&A, how do you find cheap land? Or how'd you get started on a budget? You know, her response was find cheap land. You know, find land that needs you. It, it's gonna be crappy. It's gonna be, you know, bad land that you have to nurture and turn into something. But think of how many pieces of property are crappy land that used to be beautiful farmland or, or beautiful, you know, fields with cattle or gardens or ho old homesteads that are not any longer because they've been overgrown and overrun by different things. Lack of, of a caretaker. Find land like that. Buy it. She even said squat on it, which I don't recommend, but hey, whatever works for you. And it kind of made me look at my land buying options a little bit differently. It made them look a little more attainable. And so it was funny because Mark sent me some property listings just the other day of, you know, wooded crappy land, but it was cheap. It was dirt cheap for this area. And so I'm thinking maybe he's on the same page as me, but if we all know the story of Polyface Farm, Polyface was nothing, nothing when uh, Jill Salison's father got started. It was just wasteland and it took him a few years to build that soil back up, but it's amazing and it's awesome. And today it's rolling pasture and beautiful farmland because of the, because of the caretaking that he put into it. We're stewards of the earth. And why not continue to be stewards of the earth and find land that needs you? So we'll see where the next year or two takes us, but I think we're kind of changing our mindsets in that region. And last but certainly not least, we are enjoying being home. Uh, several days away from the homestead, even though we don't have much right now, it was trying. I mean, it, it's difficult with children and, you know, for for a long time I just had Junior and so he's gotten used to kind of going and doing with us. But now with Everett, it's a totally different story. And so we really enjoyed coming home. And you know, we released a t-shirt this year at HOA called Life is Better on the Homestead and it brought a whole new meaning to that phrase to me because it was so nice to come home and just be us again. Just be a family, make a home cooked meal, lay in your bed, feed your chickens, you know, and, and think of all the dreams that you have after attending an event like that. So it was really, it was inspiring. You know, sometimes it, they say distance makes the heart grow fonder and it's true. Sometimes we have to distance ourselves from our homesteads too, so we can kind of get refocused on what our dreams are and and what our goals are and you know my goal has always been to be as sustainable as possible but you know I can't be a hundred percent sustainable no matter where I live I just know I can't because I don't have it within me to be a hundred percent sustainable I don't attainable sustainable not attainable it's not attainable for me personally to be a hundred percent sustainable because I know I don't have the attention span or the work drive to be a hundred percent sustainable but I know that it is attainable to be sustainable in ways that I want to be sustainable and you know on my homestead I want a milk source and I want goats because I know how hard it is to take care of a cow um, from growing up around cows but cows are not totally not an option either and so I'm keeping that open to um, you know, I, I want to run pigs, you know, Mark can't eat beef because of Lyme's disease and so pigs and pork is the option for us. Chickens, running chickens, meat birds, um, but having something simple, like I don't need all the things, I need what we need and that's a meat source, so chicken and pork, milk because I want to make cheese and butter and uh, have a good milk source and vegetables, you know, put all the rest of my time and energy into a big, big garden and the reality is that I feel confident enough in knowing that I could probably attain that just about anywhere right now, as long as it's not in the middle of the desert, but there are plenty of people doing that as well. But here in Virginia, it, it's not, it doesn't seem so difficult now. It doesn't seem so unattainable now. Um, when you have that mindset shift of, hey, I don't need the perfect farmland to be a sustainable and efficient homestead. So I really encourage you guys to attend one of these conferences, even if it's not my conference, guys, even if it's a Mother Earth News conference or if it's, you know, another different local conference that you can attend that can be inspiring to you and just reminds you of what you're doing and why you're doing it. Get away from the homestead. Get off the homestead. 
I know that sounds crazy, but homestead and let that distance make your heart grow fonder of of what your goals are because sometimes it's it takes stepping away from something that you've worked so hard for to really kind of have it all settle into place for you and to give you new dreams and to revitalize your goals and what you want for your life so yeah I didn't even get to do a lot of stuff at the HOA conference this year and that's what I took away from it. Imagine if you came next year and got to see all the things unlike me this year and you'd really be on fire. Check out our website, homesteadersofamerica.com. We are already starting to plan for 2020. Tickets go on sale December 1st, just in time for Christmas, y'all. And uh, we already have our two, two of our main speakers lined up, which is Joel Salatin and Eustace Conway. And we have a few more people that we're thinking about adding to that list, of course, because we have a lot of people every year that come and we're switching it up a little bit. I want to hear all about what you guys want. It's all about you guys. What kind of demos do you want? What kind of classes do you want? What kind of lectures do you want to see? Uh, what are your likes and dislikes about the conferences? Are there things that I can do differently that I haven't, you know, done yet or I, maybe I need to know about? So we're always growing, always changing, always trying to make things better. And we are so glad and happy and honored to have you along the way. Hope you guys have a great day. Happy homesteading.